Greetings from Savvy Layman. If you use Microsoft Windows or any other modern operating system, you may have noticed how often it checks for updates. I'm one of those old school guys who shuts down his PC every night, so in my case, Windows checks for updates on each startup. There is a good reason for doing so. First, complex software always contains bugs. Some bugs may be more annoying than others, but severe security vulnerabilities could ruin your day if exploited by naughty hackers. Second, software updates often come with new features or performance improvements. And that's a good thing. If we take a step back from the operating system, there is one more piece of code which is run even earlier as the computer boots up. It's called BIOS, firmware or UFI in modern machines. I'm used to calling it BIOS, so please bear with me. BIOS as such resides in a dedicated, non-volatile flash memory chip on the motherboard. That means the firmware can be overwritten, but it doesn't disappear when the PC is turned off. BIOS also come with the default settings related to different hardware components. Users can tweak these settings, but unlike the firmware, they are stored in a volatile memory, sometimes referred to as CMOS. The only reason why your custom settings don't disappear when the PC is turned off is thanks to a button cell battery which sits on the motherboard and powers the volatile memory. If the battery dies or is disconnected, all settings stored in this memory are lost. This can be actually useful if you accidentally save wrong settings which prevent your PC from passing power on self-test. With the basics behind us, let me show you how to perform BIOS update safely. The first tricky question is, how do I enter the BIOS UI in the first place? Since mankind failed to standardize even the most basic things in the world, we have a couple of options depending on the motherboard manufacturer. Delete button is your best bet, but some OEMs use even F2, F1 or F10, etc. If none of the usual buttons work, but the PC is still able to boot into Windows, you can hold the shift button when restarting the PC, and with a bit of magic, you can eventually make it to the BIOS. Concerning the update procedure itself, it is often more convenient to perform a BIOS update on a laptop, because OEMs such as Lenovo, HP or Dell like to use their custom BIOS and they offer a dedicated software utility to do the job, such as Lenovo Vantage. However, I'm not a big fan of custom BIOS, as it always limits what a user can do with a PC. I'm far more interested in standard desktop motherboards and their generic BIOS. And again, depending on the manufacturer, the procedure may slightly vary, but the main steps are identical across the board. A word of caution before we start. BIOS update can go wrong, and if it does, it can break your motherboard. Fortunately, it has never happened to me over the years, but I always worry about unexpected power outage. Therefore, if you have a UPS, you are blessed. Laptops are safer in this regard due to their integrated battery. But if there is a thunderstorm or a strong wind raging outside, it is way smarter to postpone the update. Luckily, many motherboards come with two BIOS chips these days, so the computer would be able to boot even if the primary BIOS got corrupted. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you update the BIOS, all user-defined settings are lost. If your BIOS supports profiles, you can save one, but I still recommend exporting the settings to a text file if your BIOS supports it, or taking screenshots, especially when you spend hours overclocking the memory or optimizing the PBO curve like me. Because you know what? I've recently experienced a BIOS update which wiped all the profiles without warning. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I had to postpone the curve optimizer video. Don't! Moreover, profiles become somewhat useless if the BIOS menus are poorly designed. I'm not sure if this affects other manufacturers, but my dear Asus sometimes changes indexes or indices of the menu options with their BIOS updates, which renders profiles that were saved under previous BIOS versions obsolete. I will soon show you what mess this poor design choice can make. Now, 
back to the actual BIOS update procedure. A traditional desktop PC will not notify you of a new available BIOS version, so you need to do your homework manually. First, you need to find out what motherboard model your PC uses. In Microsoft Windows, you can open System Information, MS Info 32, and check Baseboard Product Attribute. If your PC is a laptop, check System SKU Attribute instead. You can then visit the manufacturer's website, verify if they offer a higher BIOS version than what you have in place right now, that is BIOS version slash date attribute, download the latest BIOS and follow the installation instructions. BIOS or firmware binary file usually needs to be renamed and or copied to the root directory of a mass storage device such as a USB flash drive. Once this is done, reboot the PC and enter BIOS UI. Find the menu option, which is used to perform the update. It usually contains the word flash. For example, on ACES motherboards, it is called Easy Flash. Select the target drive and locate the actual binary file. Like so. Confirm and wait. This can take a while. Just do not turn off the PC while the update is in progress. When the update is finished, the PC will reboot. Since all the user-defined settings were wiped with the update, they need to be configured all over again. As I said earlier, one can theoretically load the configuration from the safe profile, but it doesn't always work properly. Take a look at these blank attributes. It's a complete mess, and if I save these settings and reboot now, the PC will not post at all. Therefore, the screenshots I took prior to the update will come very handy indeed. Save the profile, the settings, reboot, and voila, that's it. BIOS update is certainly not rocket science, but one is to play it safe. Murphy's loss could ruin your day, but you can always take certain precautions, such as taking screenshots of the settings or postponing the update until the weather gets better. And though BIOS updates can sometimes introduce bugs, you are almost always better off running the latest version. Good luck with your update, thank you for watching and have a nice one.